batteries are extremely useful devices. They allow us to store energy in small packages and then use that energy as electricity. While my evil twin obviously needs to get his own set of batteries, we can at least create a simple voltage tester out of the micro bit and use it to see how much life is left in other batteries. But first, let's talk about how batteries work. Benjamin Franklin first used the term battery in 1749 to describe a group of capacitors that he was using to conduct some experiments on electricity. Prior to that, battery simply meant a collection of objects grouped together to perform a single action, like a battery of artillery. It wasn't until 1799 when the Italian physicist Alessandro Volta created something that more closely resembles what we think of as a battery. By sandwiching copper and zinc plates around a piece of cloth soaked in sulfuric acid and salt water, Volta discovered that he could produce an electric current between the plates. The voltaic pile, as it was known, wasn't very practical. It was heavy, didn't produce a lot of electricity, and had a nasty habit of leaking sulfuric acid. It did, however, form the basis for the modern battery. Batteries are normally made up of three basic parts. First is the anode, which is one type of metal. This might be something like zinc, and is marked as the negative side of the battery. At the top, we have the cathode, which is another type of metal, such as copper. The cathode is marked as the positive side. In the middle, we have the electrolyte, which is a liquid or gel that chemically reacts with the cathode and anode. Note, however, that no chemical reactions occur unless we connect the battery to a circuit. When we do connect a circuit, a chemical reaction occurs between the anode and electrolyte that produces extra electrons. At the same time, a different chemical reaction starts to occur between the cathode and the electrolyte. However, this chemical reaction requires electrons to happen. So the electrons need to move around our circuit from the anode to get to the other side. We can harness the power of these moving electrons to do things like light light bulbs and run our micro bit. This is how we get electricity from batteries. After using the battery for a while, the chemical reactions on the inside will stop and that battery is considered dead. Some batteries you can recharge and others you cannot, like this AA alkaline cell. For most batteries, as you use them up and use their stored potential energy, the voltage between the terminals will decrease. Many electronics will stop working after that voltage for AA and AAA cells reaches about 1 to 1.2 volts. So let's build a battery tester that measures voltage. The plan is to use a couple of wires to connect the negative terminal of the battery to the ground pin on the micro bit and then connect the positive terminal of the battery to pin zero. We'll have button A print out the raw analog reading, which will be a number between zero and 1023. We'll have to do some math to get the voltage. On the micro bit, the highest voltage the analog input can read is 3.0 volts, which translates to the number 1023. To convert the measured value to a voltage, we multiply it by 3 and divide it by 1023. To make the calculation easier, we'll use millivolts, where 1000 millivolts is equal to 1 volt. To get millivolts, we multiply the analog reading by 3000 and divide it by 1023. We can make a simple table showing what we might expect. If something is zero volts, it will give us a reading of zero. A fully charged AA battery should be around 1.5 volts. That should give us a raw reading of 512 or 1500 millivolts. A battery that's just about dead should be at about one volt or 1000 millivolts. That should give us a raw analog reading of around 341. Let's build it. In make code, Drag a show string block from basic to on start. Change it to battery tester so we know what program the micro bit is running. Drag an on button pressed block from input to the workspace. Get a show number from basic and put it under the on button a pressed block. Go into advanced and get an analog read pin from pins. Snap it in the show number block. Get another on button pressed block and put it in the workspace. Change the button to B. Create a new variable named millivolts. Put a set millivolts block in the on button pressed B block. Grab a round block from math and put it in the set millivolts block. Get a division block from math and place it in the round block. Get a multiplication block from math and place it in the left side of the division block. 
Get an analog read pin block from pins and put it on the left side of the multiplication block. Change the constants in the math blocks so that the analog read pin value is first multiplied by 3000 and then divided by 1023. Get a show number block from BASIC and put it under the set millivolts block. Get a millivolts variable and put it in the show number block. Now, let's grab an if else block from logic and put it under show number. Get a less than block from logic and put it in the conditional part of the if else block. We'll get another millivolts variable and put it on the left side of the less than sign and change the constant to 1200. Put a frowny face icon under the if section and a happy face icon under the else section. Now, if the battery voltage is measured to be less than 1,200 millivolts, or 1.2 volts, we'll get a frowny face showing that the battery is dead. If the battery has a higher voltage, we'll get a happy face showing that it's still good. Give your program a name like Battery Tester. Download the program and copy it to your micro bit. Connect alligator clips to pin zero and ground. Find a AA or AAA battery to test your device on. Touch the negative side of the battery to the wire connected to ground, and the positive side of the battery to the wire connected to pin zero. Make sure that you're using USB to power the micro bit as that will give you the most accurate reading. Press the A button to get a raw micro bit reading of the battery. Then press the B button to get that voltage in millivolts. It looks like this one is 1510 or 1.510 volts. Because this battery is still above 1.2 volts, it's still usable, and I can use it in my TV remote. I hope this helps you understand how you can measure battery voltage, and with that, I'm off to disassemble a few drone controllers to get the rest of my batteries back. Oops! This is why they don't let me fly drones professionally. <laughs>